Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener, and you know that if I'm sitting in front of two pots, we're gonna be planting something fun. So big thank you to Jung Seed for partnering with me on another great video and providing some beautiful plants for this video. So one of the great things that plant breeding has given us as gardeners are plants that are the right size for our gardens. And this means in many cases, some plants are available smaller. So if you garden on a balcony or in a small space or on a tiny little lot, you can still grow some very cool things. But sometimes you have space, but you still want a smaller plant. And that's where today's project comes in. So I have one apple tree in the vegetable garden. It's an espalier apple. I don't really have room here or want to dedicate room to a sort of traditional apple tree. Um, but I would like to have more apple trees, not just to help sort of pollinate everybody, but also um, because I would like to eat more apples. And that is where columnar apples come in. Now, columnar apples are exactly that. They're apples that grow in a column. They get about 10 feet tall, uh, maybe eight feet tall, somewhere in that range, and only about two feet wide, but they're not espalier. You don't have to prune them tightly to do this. This is what they are bred to do is grow tall and skinny. So if you've got a fruit tree that only gets eight feet tall and only two feet wide, imagine all the places you could tuck that in. And one of those places that you could easily tuck those in are container. So I've talked about Jung Seed before. They are a family owned Wisconsin company. Um, they've been around for more than a hundred years. Um, I love working with them. They are good people. They have great products. They have garden centers in Wisconsin, but I actually order everything online from them. So these are the trees. Uh, you can tell that these are grafted trees. You can see the graft uh, right here. Um, and this is how they came to me with really nice root systems. I have been soaking them for about an hour or so just to rehydrate those roots before I plant these. And I have two different kinds. Uh, there are multiple, there are several kinds of columnar apples and junk seed offers, I wanna say maybe four of them, but it's important to get two different kinds if you're only gonna grow two because you need some cross pollination to help things out. So I have a scarlet sentinel and a white icicle. Now, if you're planting these in the ground, basically the same thing that you would do to plant any fruit tree sort of applies. If you're planting these in containers, um, I like to mix in so I have a really good uh, peat-free quality potting soil in here. And I've mixed in um, a small amount of compost and some biochar. Now, quick note about these pots. These are really too big for these plants. These are, I think, 16 inches. This this is probably should be in more like a 12 inch pot. And I only say that because when there's so much soil around, it can be a little hard to gauge the water needs of a smaller root system. So ideally you would grow this out in like a 12 inch pot until that root system got bigger and then pot it on. Well, I bought these pots before the plants came and uh, I like these pots. These are the pots that they're gonna be in and I don't have any nice looking 12 inch pots. So I'm just gonna go uh, with this and just be really mindful of the watering and be very careful not to oversaturate these plants. So planting these couldn't be easier. You just make a hole. Like I said, I've already pre-moistened this potting mix um, because it can be hard to properly moisten potting mix when you just put it in such a big pot. Um, these are beautiful roots on here. Um, you can see where the roots uh, meet the main stem here. And uh, that's just what we want to do uh, is make sure that that's at the top of the soil level. Um, I am going to kind of just sort of untangle these a little bit so they have a little bit of root room there. Maybe even try to make like a little cone for them to sit in there. And then it's really important with pots, you just have to kind of hold the plant where you want it to go and then sort of pull up and down um, as needed. And I'm just going to kind of tuck that in a little bit there. No pushing or shoving or padding. You just want it sort of firmly in place uh, and that's good. Now I will probably check this in a couple of days to make sure this hasn't gotten too high or too low because that can happen a little bit with sort of lofty container mix. You can always sort of bring it up just a touch um, or push it back down, whatever needs to be done, adjust your soil level, but do check that a couple of days after you plant and just keep an eye on that in the future. 
In terms of long-term care of fruit trees in pots, it's no different from any other tree or shrub you would plant in a pot. It's important to fertilize uh, even more so than with something in the ground because there's just not a lot of nutrients in uh, potting mix, even when you add a bit of compost. So once a year, uh, probably early spring, apply an organic fertilizer to this the appropriate amount for um, you know the, this size of tree and this size of pot. Don't overwater or underwater. Now you want to plant these obviously close enough to each other that they can cross pollinate, which is the point of having two different varieties. And in terms of winter storage, I will probably keep these in my unheated greenhouse, which is what I tend to do with most of my potted trees and shrubs. It works out really well for me. But uh, in most areas, you'll be able to keep these in a sheltered, just move these to a sheltered spot, assuming you've got things in a frost proof container, which these are. Um, a sheltered spot, tuck them in against something, maybe give them a lot of mulch around the top. Um, you can even kind of build stra uh, straw bales around them to kind of protect those roots. Uh, you could even sink the entire pot into the ground, which will uh, make your pot a little dirty when you dig it out, but yeah, it will absolutely protect those roots. So you have a lot of options in terms of managing these for winter. I think these would be great um, as sort of uh, along an entry. There is a certain formality to these because they are um, so tall and narrow. That columnar form always uh, has a little bit of formality, I think. So even before we get apples, which will be a couple of years, um, I think these are going to be beautiful plants to have. Now I will plant something, um, you know, a little ground cover, maybe some Corsican mint or something like that um, along the bottom here to decorate this. Mulch is a really good idea in these, so uh, consider giving them a little bit of mulch just to keep that moisture in these pots consistent. So don't let the fact that you may not have room for an orchard stop you from growing some really cool fruit trees. Um, I am so happy that Jung Seed offers trees like these. Um, they're not super easy to find uh, and it's great that Jung offers these as well as a whole bunch of other fruit trees and like every other kind of plant you can imagine under the sun. And because uh, these came bare root, you know, they they travel really well. They are smaller plants, but um, the financial commitment is low in the beginning rather than running out and buying a six foot tall one. Um, that is harder to plant because this couldn't have been easier. So I would say for ease of planting, you couldn't ask for anything better than that. Obviously grow these in a sunny spot, at least part sun. Full sun would obviously be better. That's just what fruit trees want in general. And uh, these are gonna bring me absolutely um, years of joy and hopefully some great apples. All right, I hope you have a great day in your garden. Give some fruit trees a try. A big thank you to Jung Seed for sponsoring this video and do check out their selection because they have some great stuff. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.